Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We are back again with our OWASP Spotlight series and this time we have uh, an interesting project which you might have heard and which you might not have heard but we want to share it with you. That is OWASP OpenCRE. Uh, it's one of the project which actually uh, sounded very interesting but I would not um, leave any spoilers here. I will invite the leaders uh, who have actually created the project. So let me invite Spiros and Rob with me here. Hi, Spiros. Hi, Rob. Hi, Vanana. Hey, everyone. Hey. Yeah. So first, we will start off with you, Rob, and then we'll move on to you, Spiros. First, you can introduce yourself, what you do, and then we would like to know about what OpenCRE is. All right. Thank you. I will be, be brief about myself. My name is Rob van der Veer. I'm from the Netherlands. I live in Amsterdam. And I'm a senior director at Software Improvement Group. And I'm involved in, with OWASP for a long while. I contributed to SAM. I uh, contribute to the uh, AI Security and Privacy Guide. And I'm part of the Integration Standards Project together with Spiros and the team. And four years ago, we started uh, OpenCRE. And OpenCRE is really a mission because in security, it is, it's really important, but very difficult to understand everything, the whole chain from regulation to business risk, to requirements, to code examples, to vulnerabilities, test methods, tool configuration, everything is you know, described in different locations. And so far, there hasn't been a solid way to, to interconnect these standards and guidelines and, and tooling configurations. And for that reason, we started OpenCRE. As said, four years ago, uh, under OWASP, so it's an open source project, and many people are working on it. And we want to connect all these sources of information by linking topics and subjects across multiple resources like the OWASP Top 10, the ASVS, Proactive Controls, Testing Guide, Cheat Sheets, OWASP SAM, SSDF, ISO 27001, uh, the Cloud Security Alliance, Control Matrix, uh, CWE, KPAC, PCI DSS, NIST 853-63B. I, I think that this list illustrates the whole issue that we, uh, that we have with all these resources. There's just a lot of them. And it's a lot of effort to find the information if you're working on something in particular. Now, we link all these things uh, together. And I think the best way to, uh, to explain this is uh, to show this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen. So let's do a quick demo, shall we? And go to a security resource. The Secrets Management Cheat Sheet at OWASP. Um, here we have an explanation of how you manage your, your secrets, which is one of the topics that we cover. And here at the end of the document, it says, if you want to know more, look at OpenCRE. That's the, the most typical use case of OpenCRE. And when we click on that, we see secret storage. And that's what we call a common requirement, a topic that is covered in many different standards and guidelines. And all that information we have grouped under this common requirement here at OpenCRE. And it shows an overview of all the requirements that are part of this storing uh, keys, uh, salting and, and hashing your passwords, all these, uh, all these elements. And we, saw, we see other resources. We see, of course, the secret management cheat sheet that we just came from. We see coverage of secret management in OWASP SAM, which is a standard on the secure development lifecycle. And we see a link to a tool, which in this case is an OWASP project that we can jump straight into. And this is a project that helps you to train people on secret storage. And we have all these deep links to these resources in OpenCRE. So the only thing you have to do is click in your broad to the exact same spot that is about secret management. And when you look at the bottom of this, uh, this document, it again refers to OpenCRE. Uh, so everything is connected. That's the, that's the whole idea. 
The same goes for SAM. So let's say you're working on secret management. Now you see everything that you need to take care of here under requirements. And let's say, okay, I want to organize this in my, uh, in my teams. How am I going to do that? Well, let's have a look at SAM. And SAM will describe the activities that you need to set up, how you need to educate people, what you need to have in place and do this successfully with different maturity levels. And if you want to know more about uh, how to do this exactly, you can look in the team guidance that the SAM team has nicely collected. And one of the things that you'll find is, again, a link to Open Siri back to secret management. So that's the whole idea, to connect all these resources and standards together into, uh, into one hub. So Open Siri is basically your gateway to all these, uh, all these resources. And for the author of a standard, work becomes really easy. You just point to the right topic at Open Siri, and your reader has access to a wealth of information. You don't need to look for all that info yourself. You don't need to keep the links up to date. They will keep on working. Open Siri will take care of it. So you can concentrate on writing down your guideline, creating your tool, creating your coding guidelines at your organization. If you want people to read more about SQL injection or uh, XML parsing, just refer them to Open Siri and they can find all the resources that they need depending on you know, their interest and their scope of work, whether they're a tester or a developer or whether they're working for, uh, for, for procurement. Um, so let's go back to this list of requirements that are part of secret storage to learn a little bit more what's, uh, what's under the hood. Uh, for example, store cryptographic keys securely. Let's zoom into that. What does that requirement say? Ah, it links to ASVS, which exactly describes how you can verify whether this control is, uh, is in place. A link to the weakness, explaining what the whole problem is. Uh, a link to NIST 863. The cheat sheets on cryptographic storage and key management. Links to PCI DSS on cryptographic uh, key storage. And a link to secret storage in general, of course, because that's the parent topic. And there's a whole hierarchy of topics and part of Open Siri. And um, also a link to cryptography. That's nice because then we get into the realm of the cloud controls matrix that talk about that talks about cryptography uh, in cloud situations. Uh, ISO 27001 control on the use of cryptography. NIST 853 with different you know, coverages and articles on how to do this. And last but not least, the entry in the OS top 10 that is about cryptographic failures that is linked to this. So this is the whole idea. We want to connect everything uh, and make sure that everybody can find information and nobody anymore has to create all the mappings back and forth uh, between all these standards because it's just too much work to get right and too much work to keep up to date. And to give you a little bit more insight into the whole structure of this, let's have a look at uh, a diagram that, that illustrates how this, uh, how this works. So Open Siri is a catalog of common requirements, a catalog of topics that are part of governance, the development process, technical controls, operations, and cross-cutting concerns. Those are the main topics in uh, Open Siri, and you can dive deeper and deeper. And to illustrate this, let's have a look at Open Siri again and browse some topics. And it starts with these five main topics that I discussed, and then you can drill down to, okay, let's look at the technical application security controls, then session management, and then we have uh, minimizing session life. And we're drilling down with all these requirements and finding all the relevant information that we need to make these things happen. That's the whole idea of Open Siri. So apart from being referred to a specific topic and finding all the information that you need, you can also browse uh, to discover and explore security topics. Also, process topics. What we basically did 
is we've created a consensus on the whole framework of what security is using ISO 27001, um, the whole CISSP idea of, of framing security, uh, NIST, and we combined all those frameworks and we made it accessible in such a way that if you're doing a specific task at a specific moment, you will find all the information about that specific moment in time and the role that you have to maximize findability of information instead of creating a text taxonomy. And it's actually a semantic web. We tried to configure it as much as possible according to a tree structure that you can browse through like this, development processes, then you have architecture design processes, and then there is uh, uh, threat modeling right here. But you also, if you go to threat modeling, you have all kinds of side steps that you can go through, uh, like uh, uh, a side link to set up and maintain a secure software development process or development processes for security in general. So that's the whole idea of the catalog of common requirements. And if we zoom into this, you see here two specific common requirements. Uh, they are input and output protection. And part of input and output protection is restricting XML parsing. These are common requirements represented in open theory and covered in many standards and guidelines. And we have links from these topics to standards and guidelines. And the nice thing is that uh, this KPEC article doesn't have to link to the OWASP test guide and CWE and the cheat sheet and all the other resources. It only has to link to open theory. And because this article at CWE links to the same common requirement, and this test guide article links to the same common requirements, they basically all link to each other. And they create an overview of this uh, requirement and all the resources that are necessary to work with the requirement. And to show you this exact requirement, let's have a look. Restricting XML parsing, it links to ACS, CWE, a uh, number of cheat sheets, uh, a rule uh, for you, uh, from OWASP SAP to test for XML external entity attacks, an explanation of the threat, and also on a higher level, a uh, discussion by NIST on input and output protection. So many, many resources around one common requirement, all coming together and all available to you. So in a nutshell, that's what open theory is. But there's much more. And for that, uh, Spiros will, uh, will show you a nice new feature shortly. Spiros, over to you. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Vandana. Uh, hello, world. I'm Spiros. I've been with OWASP for uh, about 11 years uh, as a technical lead. Uh, I'm currently working for a company called Ocurity uh, as a principal security engineer, and I am the co-lead and the technical uh, co-lead uh, for OpenCRE. Uh, today, I'm super happy to announce that we have a chatbot. It is quite a unique chatbot in the sense that it is the only chatbot that provides security information with references. Uh, you can access it by clicking on CRE chatbot from our main page. And here you can ask any info, information security question. And OpenCRE will do its very best to answer with accurate information and references and very, very low hallucinations, or at least make hallucinations obvious because the references will not match. So let's try something simple. What is cross-site script? What OpenCRE does in the background, it accesses the knowledge base we have put together and every single standard it knows. And it tries to match the question with something we know in the background that provides this information. For example, here it found the relevant CWE and it answered with more information on the particular topic, XSS. But this is quite basic, so let's do something even better, such as, can you 
please provide instructions on how to mediate excesses with, let's say, yeah, right? First, we say please, because when um, it is good to be polite always. <laughs> but uh, second, uh, and most importantly, in jokes aside, it is OpenCRD now does the same thing. And this time, it found the NoWasp cheat sheet, which is even more important because this way you can click and get to the OWASP cheat sheet and find the code you need, the up-to-date and accurate information in order to fix this. Super important, you can, access, you can ask it any other question you want. It will reply to the best of its knowledge and abilities and based on the information it has. To my knowledge, this is the only security chatbot that provides sources and reference. And it is free to use for any OWASP member out there. Uh, that's all. Uh, in this, having said that, uh, I would like to thank Sharif Masur for his input on this and um, Google for their support and their sponsorship on helping us make this. That's all. Yeah. Over to you, Anna. Yeah, this is totally amazing. And I'm sure people will get benefited out of it. And if somebody wants to contribute, how exactly they can contribute? That's uh, a great question. Uh, we have an OWASP um, uh, GitHub repository. You can find it under github.com forward slash OWASP forward slash common dash requirement dash enumeration. We have a bunch of issues uh, that are targeted that are tagged with good first issue or help wanted. And that's things that we think would be easy to implement by beginners. Uh, but also we take um, feature requests or bug, issue, bug reports uh, by tagging on new issue. And we are also in a Wasp Slack under project dash CRE. Yeah, I think I'm going to share all these resources in the chat box so that anyone who would like to contribute, they can contribute to this project. Thank you very much. And yeah, if I can thank add you. to that, this is... yes, if please. I can add to that, so uh, contributing to open theory is one thing. Uh, what we're, of course, seeking uh, are standards like uh, uh, the many standards that are already connecting to open theory, such as, such as Sam, to join in and to create links to uh, OpenCRE, because the moment that you create a link to OpenCRE, we can parse your machine-readable resources, and uh, your link to OpenCRE becomes a mapping. So nobody needs to uh, maintain any mappings anymore between your standard and SSDF and uh, SAM, and you name it. Uh, if you create a link to OpenCRE, your standard will be mapped and will be accessible uh, through all these other resources. So contributing is indeed, uh, like Spiros explains, by further building OpenCRE as a system and a, and a hub. Uh, and furthermore, we would like to invite any standard maker uh, to, uh, to, to join OpenCRE by creating links and uh, working with us to, uh, to get them connected. Absolutely. I'm sure there are a lot of people who would get connected after this. And a huge shout out to uh, you and Spiros and at the same time, Google and Sharif uh, for contributing towards it. If you need any help from anyone, please do feel free to reach out to us. We'd be very happy to help you in any way possible with OpenCRE. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. It was wonderful to have you here. Thanks for having us. Thank you.